Hi, welcome to the channel. I had a request a few weeks ago to look at contrast enhancements, normalization and perhaps equalization. It's not something I've looked at in any detail uh, in previous videos and I thought, well, maybe, maybe worthwhile to have a little bit of a closer look at image histograms and what are we actually doing when we enhance brightness and contrast. I say to my students all the time, if you are going to make comparisons of the brightness in comparative images, you really shouldn't be changing the brightness and contrast because it changes the numbers. Um, and I think we should just take a closer look at that. So should we normalize? Should we equalize? Should we just let image J do an auto enhance? That's what we're going to think about in this video. Okay, let's get started. So I've got an image here which has not got a great amount of contrast in it, so it, it should hopefully serve as a, a reasonable example of what we're going to do. And what we're going to do, we're going to think about what happens when we enhance contrast. So the first, of thing, first thing that we need to be aware of is our image histogram. So we can see in this image, we have got two peaks. One peak here, which will be all of this dark stuff, and another peak here, which will be all of these sort of mid-range gray uh, pixels. Might be clearer if we change this to a spectrum lookup table, and then uh, looked at the histogram here. You can see that this peak here associates with all of the, the yellow color and the, the very dark pixels are orange. Uh, okay, but let's go back to grayscale for now. All right, what would we typically do would be to go to adjust, brightness and contrast. And what we get is our image histogram as we see again. And this um, diagonal line here, which is showing us the way in which image J is mapping the, the pixel intensities to the lookup table. And what we could do is we could decrease the range of intensities that we're mapping onto that lookup table. And you see here by squeezing the minimum and maximum, we have a narrower range of intensities running between 70 and 177. Everything below 70 will be assigned as black, zero, in a 255 8-bit image. And everything above 177 will be set to white or 255. And we can see that if we change the brightness, you see how that changes the mapping. And if we change the contrast, it makes this steeper. And you see it brings in a narrower range of intensities. Now, up until the point where we hit apply, all that we've done is just changed the, the lookup table mappings. We haven't really changed the values until we hit apply here. Now if we hit auto, really what it does is a, is a, is a form of normalization. It sort of stretches this, uh, it stretches the histogram a little bit. And if we hit auto again, it'll brighten up. And you see it'll keep going until it gets to the point where we've got so much saturation, probably the one after this, another one after this, it resets. And if you watch that diagonal line in the window here, so this is setting different levels of pixel saturation until it just resets. Now if we were to maybe take a nice auto, and that's too much, isn't it? Let's say, let's say we quite like that and we want to apply it. MSJ warns us your pixel values are going to be changed if you click OK. So it's really important that we recognize this, that when we play around with the contrast, the brightness and contrast, we're changing the values in the image. Now, if you're making a comparison between different images that were perhaps 
collected under different concentrations of a drug or whatever and they have different intensities and you want to make intensity comparisons and you need to be really careful about whether or not you should in fact be altering the contrast probably best to um, probably best to just measure the the raw images okay so I've changed this one and you see that it stretched the histogram out quite a bit it, it sort of redistributed the intensities which is what we're going to do when we normalize or equalize okay let me bring in another copy of the original image and let's this time do enhance contrast so you see that we've got two options here normalize or equalize histogram so let's just go for normalize normalize is also a, a contrast stretch so that's quite similar to the auto that we saw earlier on there we can define in this case how many pixels we are happy to see saturated so that would be what percentage of pixels are we happy to have a value of 255 so let's say we go uh, 0.3% would be quite reasonable I think um, yeah yeah let's just go with 0.3 okay so watch the image you're a little bit brighter there now what we're assuming here is that our contrast or um, histogram has been stretched a little bit and as you can see it's been pulled out let's look at how much saturation we've got by using the high low lookup table now in the high low lookup table the red pixels are those which are saturated and the blue pixels are those which are completely black or zero so yeah there's not too much saturation you know that's that that may be okay for some of you and too much for others for you to decide right uh, back to the grey lookup table so let's just take in the, so here's the the raw the, the original image again let's do a normalize but this time well let's crank it up to let's say we're happy with 10% pixels saturated quite a difference eh? and then let's look at the high low yeah so we've got quite a bit more saturation in this image and if, you, if all that you wanted was to use this image for uh, illustrative purposes then it's probably it might be okay um, let's have a look at the histogram yeah see it's so it's you can see it's we're now starting to equalize out a little bit we've got a better distribution of the intensities so yeah, the intensity of the image is distributed more along this intensity axis here from 0 to 255 so by going for a very extreme contrast stretch you can kind of equalize the image okay so let's look at what does equalization do then so we'll bring in a new image and this time we're going to go enhance contrast and this time we will equalize the histogram and it will just ignore the the saturate pixels the, the equalize histogram won't use this now equalize histogram uses the frequency distribution of the pixels so it uses uh, uh, the the cumulative distribution of frequencies which can often look kind of like a straight line depends on whether you get higher or low contrast image but effectively it uses the cumulative distribution of frequencies as a function to remap your image let's see what happens when we do this very nice and let's look at the histogram okay you see it's pulled out stretched but you'll see that the equalization here comes from the 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 fact that the firstly that the, the the values are stretched across the full axis but also that the um they, they all have or the, the value the, the number of pixels that reach a particular frequency 
that re reach a particular intensity are more even. That's what I mean to say. Now, one thing that you can do, which is really neat, is you can use the frequency distribution, the cumulative frequency distribution in a small area of the image and apply that function to equalize the image. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to take a small region, let's see in about here, it's all fairly uniform. Let's look at the histogram of that. Yeah, a little narrow peak as you would expect, it's just all, all the values are pretty much around about 30, 40, if you look at the numbers up here, you know, 35, 44, so yeah, they're all kind of roughly similar. Now, we can use equalization using only this area. So let's do our enhanced contrast and we're going to equalize the histogram and very extreme. And I guess if we look at the histogram, it should be very or fairly flat. Oh no, switch spread out. I expected, I expected that one to be a little bit flatter, but hey, there you go. So in the first instance, when we were adjusting the brightness and contrast, we were using the brightness and contrast um, manually to try to, to gauge what was a good image. And what that was doing was changing the histogram. In the equalize function, we're using a different method to change the histogram which gives us the, the, the image. So we're using the histogram in order to define what's a good contrast, rather than just using our eyes to define what's a good contrast. Um, well, maybe one, one more thing to show you that might be of some interest, um, is that you may sometimes want to look at these numbers in a different way, or you might actually want those numbers. So it's worthwhile remembering that once we've got our histogram, Okay, here's our histogram for, for the original image. We can list all the values. So we should have from 0 to 255. Here we go. So it's showing us the actual data from here. Now, how might that be useful? Well, what we can do is we can rename this window, call it results. So we'll make that our results window because the distribution function up here requires a results window. And if we were to use the value, so 0 to 255 and yeah, 64 bins from 0 to 255. Oh, got it wrong. Should have been the count, shouldn't it? Oh, sorry. So distribution, uh, use the count, there you go. Okay, so this is the same data expressed in a different way. And let's say we were to, let's say we were to equalize that histogram, or we would do an equalize contrast enhancement. What would happen if to this? So we've equalized this. Let's now get our histogram. There's our equalized histogram. We'll list them. We want to rename this as our results window. And hopefully the other results window isn't still existing there. And then if we do a distribution here, There you see, we've got a pretty flat distribution of values. So that was fairly quick. Um, maybe I didn't explain it particularly well, but what I wanted to show you was the, the real importance of, of the histograms and the different way in which contrast enhancement can be done. And hopefully that will alert you to the fact that you are drastically changing the numbers when you normalize or equalize images and hopefully that will help you to do a little bit of experimentation by yourself okay
And that one came from the request. So if you've got any more requests, keep them coming. See you next time.